betting that rates will stay higher for longer ahead of Wednesday's big Fed decision. Let's go now to our very own Jared Blickery to learn more about it. Hey, Jared. Yes, let's take a look at this beautifully purplish chart here. This goes back about five years, and this has, to, has two different time series on it. Time series being the lines that we see. The cyan, the light blue line here, that is the two-year Treasury rate. It closely monitors or tracks what the Fed, what people think the Fed is going to do with interest rates over the short to medium term. And then the, uh, the filled in portion, that dark part, that is hedge fund positioning vis-a-vis uh, -vis these weekly reports we get from the Commodity Futures Trading Commission into your notes. So the first thing I want to point out that uh, if hedge funds are bears shorting treasuries, they're betting that yields are going to go up. That is because the price of bonds, as they go down, they are inverse to yields. So yields must go up for that to happen. And you can see right here, starting in about early 2021, we saw a huge, huge liftoff in two-year rates. And we remember that's back when the Fed was first starting to get hawkish and really concerned about the inflation that we finally revealed was revealed to be not transitory. All of this meaning that uh, hedge funds are actually pretty rosy on the economy. They think that going into the end of the year, we're not going to have rate cuts. Well, why would we have rate cuts going into the end of the year? That would be the result of a hard landing or maybe even a softish landing, and that would spell recession. But hedge funds are not seeing that right now. A couple of caveats. Just because hedge funds are betting on this way doesn't mean that it has to come true. They're not always right. But it's important to study when positions get crowded because if they are so heavily betting on one side of this, well, what can happen is if there's a change in tone, if there's a change in sentiment, that can, be a, that can lead to a very painful, unrighteous, Winding. And as we've seen, bond market volatility leaks into the stock market. And that's where most people are really concerned about getting in and out of positions. Um, let me just show you as a measure of bond market volatility. Here's a B of o, here's a B of a uh, move index. So this is kind of like the VIX of bonds I like to go to. Now, it has come up. It has come down, actually, quite sharply off the highs. So along with the VIX, it's showing lower risk than we saw previously in the year, but you're gonna notice it's still pretty elevated. 2022, these are elevated readings and we're only back down into the area of the lows there that we had around those 2022 lows, not even the lows themselves. So there's a lot more that could happen in the bond market. You compare that to the VIX, this is stock market volatility. Well, we're at the bottom end of this range. In fact, we are at the lowest level in years. So the bond market and the stock market are saying something differently. All of this to say, with all these huge, huge bets on the market, tomorrow's CPI re reading, uh, Wednesday's big Fed de decision, those are just going to be bigger, guys. So really got to pay attention to those, and uh, we'll see how the bond market uh, reacts to all of this. Indeed, a lot riding on that, and I'm sure that we'll be passing through every single word that comes out of Powell's mouth after that announcement. A big thank you there, our very own Jared Blickery.